That's just not true. He's very fit, and you can see that. He's fit, all right. Oh. But you're fit, too. I was fit, but I was trying to act con Mohammed. And he seems... Big. were being made. Zora Foley was in the ring, but the champion, Muhammad Ali, was not here, and he has just come in and is entertaining. coming in on the left. Right heavyweight, round the right heavyweight king, Jose Tari. You can never tell in a heavyweight championship fight, but the fans are looking forward to a tough fight from Foley, and of course, the flash and speed we've come to expect from Muhammad Ali. Both of these beakers are filled with the same leading brand of motor oil, but to this one, we've added STP oil treatment, just as you would add it to the motor oil of your car. Now watch what happens when we immerse these metal plates into each beaker. Motor oil alone drains off. Motor oil with STP clings. This is exactly what happens when your car stands still for any length of time. Oil drains off engine parts. So when you start up again, bare metal rubs against bare metal. Engine wear starts, unless you have STP. STP takes over where oil leaves off. Its tough, slick film keeps engine surfaces coated. STP cuts down engine wear. And that's how it quiets noisy motors. I'm Andy Granatelli. I use STP in my Novi race cars at the 500. And I use it in my personal car, too. I'm not looking for trouble. That's why I use STP. We're just about ready to go here at Madison Square Garden. Muhammad Ali and Zora Foley scheduled for 15. As you see, the windmill action getting ready in the left hand and upper left-hand corner of the screen, Muhammad Ali. In his corner is Luis Saria, the Cuban bodybuilder, and Angie Dundee, his trainer, and Drew Bundini-Brown, 
who's making his reappearance since they float like a butterfly, sting like a bee, and the disappearance of the championship belt, which came back. Here's the champion. Now, over in the corner, 202 and a half pounds, Zora Foley and his entourage, directly with his back to us, his manager, Bill Swift. In addition, in his corner will be P.D. Mack and John Hart, his regular trainer, Freddie Fierro, his pro tem trainer from New York, who will be in charge of the cuts if there are any. Here at Madison Square Garden, the large crowd is waiting in anticipation for this heavyweight championship fight between the champion Muhammad Ali, and you see him loosening up there. And over on the right-hand side, the challenger, the number one contender for the crown, Zora Foley. I don't think there's anything quite like the electricity of a heavyweight championship fight in all the world of sports, and tonight's is no exception. The large crowd at Madison Square Garden is literally waiting for this big one to get underway. And we're all set on the world-famous <laughs> ring announcer, Johnny Addy. Main event, 15 rounds for the heavyweight championship of the world. Introducing the officials assigned by the New York State Athletic Commission. The judges, Frank Forbes and Tony Castellano, the timekeeper, Fred Amatello, counting for the knockdowns, Bonnie Smith. The referee for the main event, Johnny Lobianco. Introducing the principals from Chandler, Arizona, wearing brown trunks. He weighs 202 and a half, the challenger, Zora Foley. His opponent from Houston, Texas. He's wearing white trunks. He weighs 211 and a half. The heavyweight champion of the world, Mohammed Ali. For the heavyweight championship of the world at stake. Mohammed Ali, Ali. You're boxing for the World Heavyweight Championship. You were briefed, briefed on every one of our rules. The three knockdowns in any one round, the bout is automatically stopped. If you score a knockdown, go to a neutral corner. Do not come out until I call you. If you're in a down position and the bell rings, the count will continue with the exception of the last round. No holding and hitting. When you're in a clinch and I tell you to break, Step back clean, protect yourself at all times. Good luck to both of you, shake hands. Scoring here in New York on a rounds basis with a supplementary point system if the rounds come out even on an official's card. The gladiators are wearing eight ounce gloves. Muhammad Ali, the white trunks. Zora Foley, the challenger. In the dark trunks, they are brown. Foley is a patient fighter. A good counter puncher, and he gets in a light right hand there. Ali, the champion, figures to circle the ring at great speed until he's ready to carry the attack to his opponent. Now remember, especially in the early rounds, the 34-year-old Foley will be dangerous. Time could work against him. He's nine years older than the champion. Foley knows everything about the manly art of self-defense, how to defend himself, how to attack, how to roll with punches, how to jab. He's, he's got all the equipment. And of course, so has the champion. The champion has speed, great speed. Two minutes left in round one. And that's a little less majesty. The challenge is showing no respect for the champion. Out of respect, probably, for Foley's punching power, the champion is keeping his gloves up higher than he usually does. He usually dangles them at his hips.
Ole keeps cocking that right hand. That's his Sunday punch. Clay figures when he's ready to open up with a flurry. And he's got all the equipment too. Chapin seemingly is going to get aggressive any moment. He's looking for the spot. And that was not a soft punch. Ole has brought the crowd up with those punches. Ten seconds left in round one. There is nothing harder in selling than selling a guy who sells for a living. That's true. Oh, I know all the techniques, all the right words to say. It's an art, believe me. It's an art, knowing how to sell. Can I interest you in trying one of our new Chesterfield filters? It's a remarkably good-tasting cigarette. Got the whole pitch? The whole pitch. That's it? Chesterfield is a remarkably good tasting filter cigarette. You're not going to promise me something? Uh, some kind of benefit? A remarkably good tasting cigarette. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing, pal. You don't know how to sell. Chesterfield now makes a remarkably good tasting filter cigarette made from the heart of a Chesterfield king. And you thought you were happy with the taste of your old cigarette. I thought I was happy with the taste of my old cigarette. Round two on the left, the champion Muhammad Ali, the white trunks, challenges Zora Foley in the brown. Foley showed no respect for the champion in the first round, and the champion did very little. Muhammad Ali is six feet three. Foley is just a little bit short of six feet one. Foley is 34 years old, the champion 25. Notice that quick right hand the challenger has. With that, he has scored 40 knockouts. And there's the first clinch of the fight. The referee, Johnny Lobianco, gets him apart. They both scored that time. has been carrying the fight to the champion. And at the moment, the champion is treating this as though it were a gymnasium workout. This is very pretty, but it is not scoring any points for the champion. And should the fight go to the limit, these early rounds count just as much as the later ones. Now Ali has dropped his gloves down. He's taking light lifts to the body and they're not annoying him apparently. One minute to go in round two. Interesting that Foley can find the champion with those right hands. And he is, and they're not soft punches.
Ten seconds to go in round two. This is a more than one beer man. A man who's working on a thirst that one beer won't make a dent in. When this workout's over, he'll be good for a couple of beers, maybe more. That's why you can figure him for Schaefer. Schaefer's brewed for the second time around, and the third. Brewed with a quality of consistency that no other beer can match. Schaefer gives you flavor that never fades. Pleasure that keeps coming on. Schaefer is brewed to go the distance for the more than one beer man. Schaefer is the one beer to have when you're having more than one. Ali, the gloves down at his side again, the white trunks. Challenges Zora Foley, watching his man go around him. Foley is a patient fighter. He rarely get, gets ruffled at anything his opponent does or at anything he himself does. He's patient. Ali's looking to get in there now with that famous flurry. He's also got to watch the countering right hand. Champion is putting on a show, but he's not bothering Foley, apparently. Two minutes left in this round. Johnny Lobianco, a very fine referee, is in there. Foley is getting those jabs into the body, too. The crowd is yelling, stand still, Foley. Don't walk around and get tired. I guess Zora knows what to do. They have both had harder sessions in the gymnasium. But without the tension of the championship match. Notice how Foley can ride back with those punches, but now the champion's jab is getting in there. <laughs> Ali got in his first good right hand that time. Flush on the jaw. Foley took it well. Round three of Madison Square Garden. The champion is now finding his opponent with jabs and is looking better. See how quick the champion's left hand is? 10 seconds to go in this round. Round three. In that round, the champion was part clown, part bicycle rider, but he still has that light speed, the spring in the legs. And it looks to me like he's assessed whatever Foley's attack is going to be. He started to throw the straight left jab, started to land, scored with the one good right hand. Foley still keeps probing with the left and trying to catch the elusive target with his right. And that would have been an even round, I would have said. Foley leads the fight two to one, what fight there has been. Zora Foley's corner. Muhammad Ali here at Madison Square Garden as we await round four. Don, the first three rounds. Looks like the champ is ready.
round four in this heavyweight championship match. Muhammad Ali, the champion of all the world in the white trunks. Zora Foley, the challenger from Chandler, Arizona. Champion weighing 211 and a half. Foley, 202 and a half. Although there's little action, the crowd doesn't seem to mind. Champion Ali is always a show, no matter what he's doing. Foley is gradually cutting down the, uh, the distance that Ali is away from him. He, he's trying to corner, Ali is trying to corner him little by little. See how well the challenger rolls back from those punches. And there's Foley down. Five, six, seven, eight. Foley is up at nine. About a minute and 40 seconds left to go in the round and Foley is back battling. They said Foley wouldn't be Tiger, but he is. This has turned into quite a fight, hasn't it? One minute to go in round four. Foley bleeding from the nose. Foley's coming back from that knockdown, and he is scoring. One of the infrequent clinches. The punches that put Foley down came so fast, you could hardly see them. There's nothing wrong with Foley's courage, believe me. He's got plenty. 10 seconds to go in round four. Have you ever wondered why two out of three Indianapolis drivers protect their $50,000 racing engines with STP oil treatment? I'll show you why, right here and now. Screwdriver, motor oil. You'll notice I have no trouble whatsoever holding the screwdriver. Now watch closely while I coat it with STP oil treatment. You simply can't hold it. Try again. Now consider what happens when you add STP to your car's engine. Suddenly pistons slide easily. The crankshaft and engine parts turn with less drag, friction and wear are reduced. And of course, noisy motors quiet down. When you buy your first can of STP oil treatment, try the screwdriver test yourself. I positively guarantee you it will work. Or my name is Andy Granatelli. Here it is, round five. Champion looked up at the clock with a round sign as he came out here. Bill Swift, Johnny Hart, and Petey Mack are in the challenger's corner. Angelo Dundee, Louis Saria, and Drew Brown, better known as Bundini, are in the champion's corner. Round five at Madison Square Garden, scheduled for 15. Few expected to go that far. such an important match, the minutes go by very fast. About a minute gone so far in round five. Oh. 
Foley, unlike many of Ali's opponents, is not afraid to throw that right hand. That's a grazing right. Neither bothers to do anything on the inside. Jab by the champ, but Foley put one in there. A couple. One minute left in round five. Those are hard jabs by the champion. They're bound to take their toll. Look at them. Foley is not flinching, however. Those jabs are carrying this round for the champion. Ten seconds left in round five. Uh, generally, we eat a piece of bread first to uh, clear the palate. So you can taste the wine better. Well, not exactly. Uh, you see, the palate gets confused when you're tasting several wines. So you don't smoke on the job? Well, not, not over the wine, as we say, but the rest of the time, I like a cigarette. Would you like to taste one of these new Chesterfield filters? How would you describe the taste? Uh, suave, aristocratic, great finesse, yet uh, beautifully balanced. We call it a remarkably good tasting filter cigarette. Well, I, I think that's oversimplifying it. Chesterfield now makes a remarkably good tasting filter cigarette made from the heart of a Chesterfield king. And you thought you were happy with the taste of your old cigarette. I thought I was happy with the taste of my old cigarette. Round six at Madison Square Garden challenges Zora Foley on the right, champion on the left. Foley was down for a nine count. He took the count, listening to it in round four. Went down from a combination, lightning punches. Other than that, he has given a good account of himself. Grazer. They're pretty close to each other now. That was a good punch by Foley. Foley has been bleeding intermittently from the nose. Two minutes left in round six. Foley had an opening for the right that time, but froze. Clay altering his style again, goes into motion. Champion Muhammad Ali putting that jab in again. Zora Foley the challenger. One minute to go in round six.
At this point, the champion alley is just too fast for Foley. He missed. The champion came out for the full minute and a half, the far first half of that round, and just stood flat-footed there within range of Foley. And the two of them sort of measured one another, and the champion depended upon his bobbing and weaving and his shoulder twitching to get his head out of range, and Foley was unable to score. And then, almost like a signal, as the round had gone its halfway, a minute and a half, he went up on the balls of his feet and started a dance. And when he does that, circling around, left and right, pinging with that left jab, Foley is just not with the champion. When he fights that fight, it's his fight. So now we're looking at the scene here at Madison Square Garden. As we anticipate round seven. There is the warning buzzer on the left in the white Muhammad Ali. On the right in the brown trunk sits Zora Foley. Don Dunphy ringside in this heavyweight championship match. Muhammad Ali, the champion, the white trunks. Challenges Zora Foley in brown. In case you join us late, Foley was down from a combination in the fourth round. Took the count listening to it and got up and has fought fairly well since. In the last round or so, the champion speed has been turning the fight his way. Now he is moving in, which is, has been unusual for him in this fight. That was a block punch, and uh, Foley rolled with them. to go in round seven. A solid punch by the challenger, who of course is the sentimental favorite with the crowd. talked about Foley's courage. The champion has plenty himself. There's no question about that. Oh, that's Foley down from that right hand. Three, four, I don't know if he's going to make this one. Six. Seven. Seven eight, eight. He's not. Nine, oh. He gamely tried to get up. And Muhammad Ali has retained his heavyweight championship of the world. After about one minute and 55 seconds of the seventh round, Foley tried game. Gamely, he gave the champion the best battle of the champion's career. That is, since he has been champion. And here's Johnny Addy with the announcement. The time, one minute and 48 seconds of the seventh round. The winner by a knockout, and still heavyweight champion of the world, Mohammed Ali. We'll be back to ringside in just a moment. Both of these beakers are filled with the same leading brand of motor oil. But to this one, we've added STP oil treatment, just as you would add it to the motor oil of your car. Now watch what happens when we immerse these metal plates into each beaker. Motor oil alone drains off. Motor oil with STP clings. This is exactly what happens when your car stands still for any length of time. Oil drains off engine parts, so when you start up again, Bare metal rubs against bare metal. Engine wear starts. 
unless you have STP. STP takes over where oil leaves off. Its tough, slick film keeps engine surfaces coated. STP cuts down engine wear, and that's how it quiets noisy motors. I'm Andy Granatelli. I use STP in my Novi race cars at the 500, and I use it in my personal car, too. I'm not looking for trouble. That's why I use STP. Well, wishers. Now let's go to the center of the ring and Don Dutphy. We're going to try to get the champion of the world, Muhammad Ali, who successfully defended his heavyweight championship with a knockout. One of the photographers thinks I'm in his way. A knockout of uh, Zora Foley in the seventh round here at Madison Square Garden. Champion, Muhammad. Here's the champion of the world, Muhammad Ali. And I think they're, they're expecting a smile from the heavyweight champion. You look as though you're unhappy. I'm, no, I'm not unhappy. I'm happy. I'm smiling. Uh, first of all, I would like to say uh, as alaykum alaykum to our dear beloved leading teacher, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And I'm um, feeling real fine tonight. I thank him for his blessings and prayers. Now let's talk about the fight. How about the early rounds? Uh, did Foley bother you? Well, Foley, Foley bothered me for a while. He was smart. He was taking his time. He was stalking. But uh, after a few rounds, he started tying, and I caught him with a right-hand lead. Was, did he hurt you at any time? Well, a few body punches shook me a little, but not enough to uh, really keep me hurt because he didn't follow me up. He wasn't really fast enough. Now, I was uh, telling the folks that the knockdown you scored in the fourth round came with such lightning speed you could hardly see the punches. It was a one-two, wasn't it? Yes, I think it was. I would have to see a you, you, uh, to, well, we're, to really uh, you, see it. You, you caught him flush, Yes. and uh, down he went. Now about the seventh round knockout, I'm uh, knocked down and knockout. I'm sure you remember that a little bit more. Well, I hit him with a right hand lead that shook him up, and then I caught him with another right hand lead. But I have to say he's a decent man. He hit me with a couple of low jabs, but he apologized for it, and it was a beautiful fight. I thought it was uh, one of the most interesting fights you've had uh, since you won the title in your, in your defenses. Well, yes, I was uh, my manager, Herbert Muhammad here was telling me that he noticed that I was a little flat-footed in this fight because uh, I used to do a lot of dancing, but uh, I couldn't, uh, I was explaining to him where I couldn't really uh, dance too much with this fellow because he stayed still, he waited for me, and I had to slow down to tag him to keep up with uh, his pace. Now, after about the fifth or sixth round, Herbert came up and whispered something to you. What did he say in the between well, rounds? He told me uh, not to play, and I told him I wasn't, he said, well, it looked like you're playing with the man. We're not here to play with the man. Knock him out. Well, I just told him that it may have looked like I was playing, but I was just filling him out. It's a lot easier standing outside looking in, but I did catch up with him later. Well, now, what about the future? What, what about the other contenders for your heavyweight title? Well, uh, it's all up to my manager, Herbert. I'll let him answer that. Um, Herbert? What about the, what about the next? We, well, we what about to, the next? Well, we don't know right now. Off we, with the old, on with the new. Well, we right now... Uh, we have a lot of offers, but we have to wait and see and talk it over with you. You have other things yeah, to consider. Things, right. I know there's been talk of uh, possibly uh, Bonavena uh, over in Tokyo, uh, and that's yeah, a possibility right, right. for some time in right. April. They have the uh, Japanese promoter here, Mr. Mr. Jin. He flew over here just to see the fight, and he's here. And we'll talk with him tomorrow, and we'll see if we can sign contracts. Mm. I already signed tentative contracts for May the 27th in Tokyo. But this is a lot of things that involve whether or not we make that fight or not. Well, now, I don't want to hurt the uh, gate for any future fight, Herbert and uh, Muhammad, but I, I just got to say, you're, you're just too darn fast for any of these heavyweights well, around. I, I like the public in the world out here to meet my father. This oh. is the father Hello. of the world heavyweight champion, and there you are, all, Mr. Clay. Smiles, all the fans in Louisville, you're now on television. <laughs> Andy Cummins. What do you think of your boy? He's the greatest I've ever seen. He is. I've seen a many fighter. He's the fastest, most active. Did you ever see uh, Dempsey or Lewis? No, I never see uh, Dempsey. I never, I never see any of the fighters, but I heard of the fighter. Heard of him. You know, we used to watch him on the television, on the radio. You know? I, I'd like to see Muhammad with one of them at their prime. Prime, well, I think we could have. I would have... say he's the greatest of all time. 
That's a good opinion. Thank you, man. You As you see, what I'm saying because my son. <laughs> but I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'd also like to say hello to my home is now Houston, Texas. Yes, and I know. And I'd like to say hello to all of my friends there, uh, the Soul Brother Skipper Lee and Wild Man and all the fans there in Houston. You know, uh, champ, uh, Mrs. Foley. I'd like and, to also say hello to my friend. I wish him luck in his campaign, uh, Dick Gregory. Oh, no, 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 no politics there. We'll have to give, e just my friend. We'll have my to give friend. equal time to He's the opposition if you do that. He's just my friend. Uh, you know, uh, I think it would be nice if we said something to... Uh, Mrs. Foley out there in Chandler, she right. must be quite disappointed. I'd like to say to her that her husband is a decent, honorable man. I checked him after the fight. He's all right. He's not seriously hurt in no way. He was just a little shook up, but he's all right. And I'd like to say hello to all of her children and for be proud of their father. Very nice. Because he's the best scientific boxer I've ever met. And if I met him 10 years ago, I know that I would have had a lot of trouble. Champ, I think we're going to replay the seventh round now if you'd like to take a look at it. Here it is. Here we are coming out for the seventh round now. Try to watch this. Do you want to tell us what's happening, Mohammed? Well, right now I'm uh, just stalking him and watching him. Uh, he's flat footed. He looks slower. As you know, he leans back when I hit at him. He's, that's my style, leaning back, and it's hard to hit a man when he leans back, and he's real tricky. Uh, was, I realized that I did have 15 rounds to figure him out, and there I just caught him with a right chop. Dazed him a little, but he's awful tricky, and he's mostly jabbing and shooting left and right at my body. He wasn't going too much for the head. How do you tell the effect of a punch on an opponent? Well, I'll watch his eyes the second I hit him, and usually he's in a trance a little dazed. Now he's carry, still carrying the fight to you here. Yes, as you know, Don, this is the uh, seventh title fight in 13 months, which is uh, the same as Joe Lewis. I've had a lot of 15-round fights during the title, and I'm really a, lot, a little tired. And a lot of other pressures on me. And uh, it looked like we had a sellout crowd here tonight, and I was glad of that. But uh, Foley's just taking his time, waiting, and I'm waiting. But I usually rely on my man uh, getting tired because... Uh, heavyweights usually are uh, tired after following me for about four rounds. Well, we're almost ready for it, aren't we? Yeah, I'm, I imagine so. I'm just watching. That was a beautiful right hand that caught him. And I don't think there's any doubt that he's not going to get up in time. Right. He, he tried. almost made it, but he stumbled. Real gentleman. That's it. He failed to beat the count. He wanted to fight. And I thought that's a good referee, that Johnny Lobianco. Yes, yes. He was really finished, and it wouldn't have been too wise because serious damage could have came taking too much shock. Now, there we have the fighters are never mad at each other when the fight's over. Right, right. And he and I never were mad. He's a real gentleman. He didn't start no controversial issues. And Everything was nice, and he told me I was a good fight, and I was telling him that uh, if it was 10 years ago, I think he would have gave me a lot more trouble. As a matter of fact, the winner by a knockout and still heavyweight champion of the world, Muhammad Ali. Have your career. Thank you. Thank you very much, Doc. Good luck, Sam. Bye now. a unique new tapered shape and a great new twist cap. One quick twist and it's open. Here's the best part. Inside every Schaefer party bottle is the life of the party. Bright, rewarding Schaefer beer. Schaefer's proved to give you flavor that comes through loud and clear. First class to last. So next time you have a party, get Schaefer in new no deposit party bottles.
in the ring with me right now is Angelo Dundee, who needs no introduction to the fans. Look at the camera up there, Angelo. Let them see you again. You've been in with so many champions, not to mention uh, the heavyweight champion of the world, Muhammad Ali. Uh, tell us your opinion of this fight tonight as it went. Well, I, it was the usual pattern he fights. He wanted to figure what this fella had. He wanted to see the mistakes he made, and he played it cool. Uh, I was, got a little leery in there because he got hit with a real good left hook in the belly around the fifth round. And uh, he did get nailed a right hand shot, but it was wide of the mark, thank heaven. But uh, uh, I got to give Foley a lot of credit. I don't think he's going to get up after that fourth round knockdown because it was it a beautiful right hand. He got look nailed. That way, did it? But he came up and he kept pitching and he kept trying in there. I got to give him a lot of credit for that. Well, what do you think of the future now? Has he run out of opponents? I don't think so. Somebody always comes along and they always say, they always say somebody in a wood pile can lick you. I hope that wood pile is pretty high. Well, right now, Joe Frazier of Philadelphia is undefeated, the Olympic champion. He's undefeated as a professional. Uh, had a big knockout over Doug Jones recently, and he's uh, knocked out Eddie Machen. Uh, how does he look to you? Well, uh, he looks like a good contender, but a lot of people are forgetting a fellow over in England that just fought by the name of Eduardo Corletti. He's an excellent fighter. Nobody's talking he's about him. He's also got a decision over uh, He's got Chivalo. a Chivalo. He's the stop walker. He's an excellent, excellent t piece of talent. And uh, there's fighters coming around. I like Joe Fraser. I like Corletti for the future. I think Chevalier deserves another shot. I think we're wide open for opponents. Oh, well, that's wonderful, Louis. Keep the game active, Angelo. What a, you, you've had uh, fine champions. Uh, you had Willie Pastrano, Luis Rodriguez. What about Rodriguez? Well, Rodriguez is fine. He just licked Benny Briscoe last night. so and That's a good win for him. He's in pretty good shape. And I think you gentlemen saw my other prospect, Jimmy Ellis, unleash something tonight. Right. Well, we're going to take a look at that Pearsall uh, Ellis fight in uh, a few moments, Angelo. So we'll keep the, the uh, folks in suspense about who won the fight. Great. I will tell them at this time that it only went one round, but we won't uh, tell them who won. Well, I and I don't think you know either because you were in the, I didn't uh, see that. Was you the, were in the dressing the room. I'm anxious to see it myself. Uh, uh, you know, coming back to the uh, championship fight, uh, it was my opinion that, uh, aside from the champion speed, that his left jab started to soften up Foley. Oh, definitely. When he, I said before the fight, when his left hand started cooking on Foley, goodbye Foley. Because this fellow's left hand is fabulous. He makes a lot of openings with it and sets the pace with it. I tell you, that snow was pretty rough on us here, Don. You didn't get the road I miss, I miss Miami badly, and I'm going <laughs> to run like a thief tomorrow and get back on to the wife uh, and kids. We had a fine crowd here at the Garden, but unfortunately, uh, some of the out-of-towners who were scheduled to come in uh, begged off. And uh, Angela, we'll be right back here in just a moment. Thank you, Don.